Hey, what's up guys? Back for another day in the workshop here and summer has set in. Got my flip-flops on, my ghostly white legs, but I am uh, sort of enjoying the heat. Not a big heat guy. Uh, fall, winter, early spring is sort of my seasons. I don't operate too well in this summer heat, but I'm doing all right and we haven't had much of it this year, so can't complain too much. Plus it's burning up the mosquitoes here, which is nice. Today we're back in the shop. We're going to be sharpening Larry. I believe it's, uh, that's his name, Larry's Mora Forest, I believe the model is. He did an attempt on it himself, didn't work out for him. So we're going to be showing you how to do that with some whetstones. Before we get started, why don't you hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if it's your first time here. Leave me a comment down below before you leave. We're going back here to the workbench. These are beautiful. Uh, I've sharpened a couple of these before for different people. I do a little bit of sharpening now for hire if someone wants to send something in, but not a whole lot these days. I just haven't been advertising it. But uh, yeah, check a, take a look at that bevel there. See the guy tried to sharpen it himself and do what I did on the video, but he didn't have much luck with it. And I do understand that this, this second grind here, See, unlike other moras, this mora changes dimension right here, and it has sort of a hollow grind on this flat, which means this, it goes from a scandy to not a scandy here, and it gets a little bit more difficult to maintain that bevel instead of having just the scandy all the way up, where you just keep the weight on that scandy and it holds the bevel. So I'm guessing that's where you had the trouble, so we're going to correct that. We're going to reprofile this whole thing, take it right down where it should be, Another thing we need to do that he wants done with this is we have a completely rounded spine. We have a really big round on the spine of this knife and he wants the spine sharpened to strike sparks on a ferro rod. So we're going to do that first because I don't want to be uh, working with that when I have a razor sharp edge. So we're going to handle that spine first. So basically my rule for how sharp a spine should be is if it can sh shave a fingernail. If it can shave a fingernail, it'll do great on a ferro rod. That's kind of the rule I've always used. So I'm just going to clamp it here in a vise. You're going to want something to fix it in position there. And now I'm going to use a file. So now you're going to use a file. So you're just going to put your file on the knife. And you're going to try to maintain um, a square or 90 degree to the flat you're going to attempt to do that. It's not the, it's not paramount that you get a perfect 90 degree angle, but you do need to file it down to where it's uh, to where it's sharp. So Now this is a job that I would normally do on my belt sander these days, and if you have a belt sander you can easily do that. But I'm using a file just cuz that's what probably most of you guys have or can get. You can run down to the hardware store and pick up a file if you don't have a belt sander. So just keep working, take it out once in a while and test. If you have to, test if it's going to shave your fingernail. And you can stop once it does. Now, a little tip I would give just before you make the same mistake I did. Once you get that spine filed on there, unless you have an angle jig. Don't go trying to work up through grits with sandpaper and stuff and, and uh, make this nice and pretty and polished again like the knife. If you do that, you'll just end up rolling over that edge again and uh, you'll have to start back from scratch. But just to show you, you can see we can shave away at the fingernail all the way along. So that means this will work real well on a ferro rod and you can still see kind of coarse scratches there compared to what would have been on the spine before but I'm not going to go any further than that or we'll start making that edge less aggressive again. Okay let's take a little look here and just kind of critique Larry's work see where he went wrong. This was Larry's first time I guess trying this out and have a look here. So what I see is maybe sandpaper not being stuck down very firmly and not holding the bevel of course and with freehand sharpening that is the trick is holding that bevel and like I said with without having scandy grind all the way up around that can be a little bit difficult so we have some mixy scratch patterns um, maybe not working long enough on a single single grit and also not keeping strokes like um, linear so you can see we have strokes going this way and this way. So 
that's when you're working your knife is going around if you want nice clean striations you have to try to be as uniform as possible with with your strokes you want a nice straight forward and back do the same thing with every pass now I've already shown how to sharpen these using sandpaper today I'm gonna have some fun and use some awesome awesome wet stones starting off here with the Sigma, I believe it's the Power Select 2. This is a 240 grit ceramic. This thing is a monster. So that's where we're going to start. Let's we'll see how she does here. So we're placing the knife flat on that spine there. And then you're just going to tip it up until it sits flat on its bevel. And you're going to try to hold that. Now, I find you don't want to use one hand for this because you end up losing control. So I will use all, both hands right in on top of the bevel. So I'll get my thumbs right in there. So I'm sitting on the bevel and that helps me maintain that angle. Let's see what happens after just a few passes on that flat surface. So yeah, we're cutting pretty fast there. We do have a little bit of a hollow. Let's see what we can get done. So I'm just finishing up with my last few strokes on this Sigma 2 here. And one thing I'd probably point out about knives like this, scan these, is that you might not always, like full pass strokes might not always be best. You might want to work on the flat a little bit and then you might notice that the the round up here, the curve of the belly, is, uh, is not coming out like you want, so you might want to focus on that a little bit. And then after, I always try to do my last strokes in full pass strokes just so you get a nice clean even scratch pattern so I'm just finishing up on the first side and you see we have a nice consistent scratch pattern there so now I'm gonna flip over I'm gonna start working the other side of the blade the Sigma 2 cuts like crazy. So now you can see what portion of the blade I've contacted so far. Right up to about here. And we have, it's kind of tough to see with the lighting, but we have nice, nice clean scratches. Pretty linear. I'll get a little bit more particular by the time we end. But now I'll go up, because I can see I've contacted the entirety of the bevel here. Now I'll go up here on the front. And start doing in that belly. So you want to make sure when you're coming up around now to work on that belly that you're both lifting the spine of the knife or the handle of the knife sorry and turning your edge in just like I'm doing here. That is the easiest way to stay on that bevel and to get a proper scratch pattern leading out to the apex just like that you can really slow down if you need to and watch that bevel watch for that shadow under the edge but Now, as always, Scandi is no different than any other bevel. On my last strokes, I always do side per side cutting strokes only. So I stop the back and forth motions, try to get consistent pressure all the way along, and I only do cutting strokes. And that helps remove any burr that's on there and give you a nice, clean, solid edge. A stone like this, just to note, I would not pick up 
if you're in the beginner stages of sharpening because it cuts so fast you could do a lot of damage in a very short amount of time uh, just a single pass at a wrong angle and you can really throw a nice knife out of uh, out of where it should be or, or do some hard to repair damage so I wouldn't do that here we have now a Shapton ceramic this is a blue black rough the KO 709 I can't remember the name I believe it starts with a K Kiridashi I believe this is a 320 grit stone I believe so finer than the last stone we could go a bigger step than this if we wanted but this is where I want to go right now just because I want to make use of my beautiful stones today this stone feels so good to cut on it's a little more forgiving than the other one being that it doesn't cut quite as fast and it gives a noticeably finer finish this is a more enjoyable stone to use it's not as aggressive and doesn't uh, doesn't tear at the steel in the same way moving now from the ceramic into I believe the silicon carbide, I believe this Nanoa, this is a Nanoa Super Stone 400. Beautiful stone that I've really enjoyed, but it's going to feel quite different. It's not going to be as aggressive as a ceramic. As you can tell by the sound difference. And I, I'm just, I'm doing each stone the same way. So I'll work it, I might work in full passes where I cover the entirety of the bevel or I might concentrate on the flat and then work up into the the rounded nose doesn't matter that much in my opinion as long as you get there as long as you cover it all I can already see that 400 just working lovely there but as long as you cover it all it doesn't matter that much the point is um, once I finish on each stone or get to the end of each stone I'll only do cutting strokes one for one on each side so that is how I am and for me that is a key part of the sharpening process to manage the burr that is formed now from that 400 we're going on to my new superstar the 1000 grit Shapton glass which I've been enjoying so much such an awesome stone and it's gonna work real well for a Scandi because it's still new and it's still super flat. Just finishing up on my Woodstock 6000 here now. This is as high as I'm going, which is higher than I ever needed to go, but I do like that polished finish. It's coming out pretty good. Some of those scratches that were up on the blade I've gotten rid of. And when I do a little bit of a little bit of stropping, they'll go away even more. So I'm just doing my single cutting strokes now into the edge, being sure to maintain that bevel that I kept all along. We want to make sure that we don't steepen our angle now. Well, it, it kind of depends on what your goal is. If your goal is to put on a micro bevel, then now might be the time to do that. So you do only cutting strokes, but you'd steepen that angle just a little bit more. And uh, put a micro bevel on there. Larry doesn't want a micro bevel. He wants just a clean flat scandy. It will convex a little bit, just a microscopic portion through through dropping. Not enough to talk about. But uh, yeah, we are almost at a finished knife here. By this point that edge should be almost untouchable. When you touch your skin to it it should be almost send chills up your spine it just bites your fingers so much just at the lightest touch that's what we're hoping for a properly sharpened scandy like this should do that now all the hard work has been done just working on a strap here I like a rough sided strap like you see here so like a suede or the back side of the leather I like to use that with compound and then I like to finish on a piece of smooth clean leather just like the 
the finished side or the outside of a veg tan leather. I'll just uh, keep the knife, I'll use lots of pressure on this candy grind, lots of pressure. That edge is looking lovely, we'll show you in a minute. But you don't want to increase your angle here unless you're going for that micro bevel that sort of scandivex, which I am not here. As per customer's orders, I'm holding that same angle. And we're looking good. Now, like I said, I'll just give it a little wipe here on my shirt, make sure there's no compound on it. I'll use just this clean, finished side of leather. At this point, you could even increase your bevel a little bit because there's no compound, so you're not you're not uh, convexing it at this point. You're just tidying up any remaining burr that might be on there. Just cleaning it up, pulling it off, just standing everything in line with that little bit of friction. And we're done. Now if you've played your cards right, ooh, that is sharp. Now here is what the bevel's looking like now. A little bit of difference from when we started when this knife was sent in. Larry, my friend, I hope you're happy with the job. We have that that uh, ferro rod striker now on the spine, which is very useful. I would agree with that mod for uh, for the Mora. If you have a Mora, I would go ahead and do that. But you can see our edge here. Let's do a quick edge test. Don't want to shave any more than that. Now super quick paper test. No hang ups anywhere along that edge. Beautiful. Hope you guys learned something in this video. Make sure to subscribe. Once again, please hit that like button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you think the micro bevel is better on the Mora or if you like to remove it as well. The Moras I've had, I've always, uh, first thing, remove those micro bevels because they put them on them from factory so I just flatten that bevel so it comes so it's just a single plane right to an apex I've had taken a lot of heat on a few of my other videos um, suggesting that that's a bad idea but I've never had any issues and I like it thank you guys for watching we'll see you in the next video